Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at the FLIR One Thermal Camera. Now I've wanted one of these for years. Ever since they first announced this, I tried to get early access as a developer, then I tried to go through marketing to try and get one like that, and pretty much there was such a high demand that I had no chance at all. And then when they did finally become publicly available, the price was, I mean, it's the price is absolutely amazing for what you get, don't get me wrong, but it's still quite expensive for the average hobbyist, which is what I essentially am. Um, and then this year I finally decided, you know what, I'm just going to treat myself and I'm going to buy one because I've wanted one for so long, a thermal camera, I'm just going to buy it. And then it turns out that a family member got me this for Christmas, so even better. So you might be thinking, okay, yeah, great, backstory, whatever, what does it actually do? Well, before I go into any detail at all, I'm going to plug it into my iPad and I'm going to show you exactly what it does. And if you're curious, this is just a carrying case, it doesn't do anything other than protect the camera. Now, eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed that it has a Apple Lightning connector. You can also buy them with a micro USB connector for use with Android devices. So all I have to do is turn it on. It does have an internal battery and I found that it lasts anywhere from about an hour to an hour and a half. So now I've turned that on, I can plug it into my iPad. I could also use this on the iPhone, but it's easier to show you on here. And it will ask me if I want to allow the Fleur app to launch, which I do. So what is this actually showing? You can see that it is some kind of camera, but it doesn't look like a normal camera. Well, this is showing heat. For instance, if I put my hand under here, you'll see that it's glowing red because my hand is much hotter in comparison to the table below. Now you might just be thinking, oh, that's some kind of camera trick. Well, let me show you this. I'll put my hand here. I'll hold it for a couple of seconds to transfer some heat, and then I'll bring the camera over it. And you can see that you can actually see where my handprint was because that heat is still on the table. Now that will fade of course, but it does actually last for a lot longer than you'd expect. So what would you actually use a camera like this for? Well, there's so many uses um, and some of them are practical, some of them not so practical. So one of the more practical examples could be security. If you were to point this out in your garden at night, although a regular camera would just see darkness, this will see anyone that's hiding. Now you might be thinking, well, there are infrared cameras for that and they can see in the dark. That's true, but what about people in bushes? You wouldn't be able to see them on an infrared camera if they're hiding behind a bush, whereas you will see them with this because of their heat. Another example can be in electronics when you want to see what's overheating. Now I've got a really good example here to show you. I have this USB dummy load. Basically it's just two massive resistors that connect directly to a USB port and a switch that lets you switch between one amp or two amp. Now this is meant for testing uh, USB power banks, USB wall charger and so on. Now with a human eye if I was to show you this, I would tell you that they're getting very hot, but you wouldn't know, you couldn't see. Whereas with this camera, I could show you that it's getting extremely hot, and that's what I'm gonna do now. So I'll plug the dummy load into my power bank. Now my power bank's not turned on yet, and I will point the camera at it. So you can see right now, if I was to turn on my power bank and tell you, oh, these are getting really hot, you would have to take my word for it. But with the thermal camera, if I put it over that, you can see here's the power pack, Here's a dummy load, watch what happens when I turn it on. Instantly you can see one resistor heating up to an extreme temperature and if I flick this switch so that both come on, you can hopefully see that the other one should start heating up as well. Now I can't run this too long because if you don't have a cooling sort of a fan or something on this then they will overheat extremely quickly. So I can't show you that for too long but you can see there the extreme heat that they're getting through. If I put my hand there as a comparison, you can see my hand is much more pale, whereas before it was bright. So that's a difference, you know, a contrast in temperature. My hand is say, I don't know, 29 degrees for example, while those resistors are just insanely hot. If I hold my hand there as a comparison, you can see my hand is still pretty pale. Now, every now and then you see it jitters like that. That's the camera recalibrating because there's a difference in temperatures, an extreme difference. So if I now point this, say, if I move this USB load away and point it at the table and I put my hand on there, you can see now my hand is glowing again because in comparison, my hand to the table is a big difference. Now, before I go into too much detail about the app itself, which, you know, it actually has more features than you'd expect, I want to just take a closer look at the unit itself. So let me zoom in and tell you a little bit about this. As you can see, the brand is Fleur. If you haven't heard of them, they're pretty much the number one for thermal cameras. And before they came along, there was pretty much no, you know, consumer affordable 
thermal camera that you could buy. The price of this is just amazing for what you get um, and you know it pretty much blows their competitors out of the water. So like I mentioned earlier, this is a lightning cable version. You can also get one which has micro USB and you can use an extension cable on this. So it doesn't have to be plugged directly into your iPhone or your iPad. I'll probably show that in another video because it is a very common question. Now, one thing you may have already noticed is that there are two cameras on here. And this is another thing that sets this apart from some other thermal cameras. It uses FLIR MSX technology, which basically combines a thermal camera and a standard camera into one image. So that means rather than just having say a blocky thermal image where you can't easily make out what's going on, it takes a regular camera and it basically finds the lines. For instance, if, it, if you pointed the camera at this, it would find this outline and then it would overlay it with the thermal image. So it combines those two cameras to make sure you get a really good picture. And that is very useful and it pretty much works perfectly. The only time when you have a slight problem is if you get too close to something, then sometimes the two images don't line up very well but they've already handled that in the app where there's an option, a slider, where you can basically line them up. So if you're going very close to something, you can adjust that and you can fix that issue. Something that was a bigger issue before, but not with this latest version. Now, like I mentioned, it does have an internal battery and I get around an hour, hour and a half battery runtime. Now, the good thing is that it's very easy to charge. It just takes a micro USB and you can charge it and use it at the same time, which is very useful. I've done that a few times, walking around with this plugged into my power bank and still using it on my cell phone so very useful that you can charge it and use it at the same time here's the power button to turn it on and off and that's pretty much it it does come with a little carry case which at first i thought was a bit awkward and a bit tight and then after using it i realized actually it's just perfect and i've been walking around with this around my neck for like weeks now and i wanted to leave it weeks before i reviewed this because it's something i've wanted for so long and i really wanted to get to grips with it before i actually did a review so now i've plugged it into my iPhone. Let's talk a bit more about it. Now I'm sure I'm going to forget a lot of things in this video and that's one of my concerns about this video that I want to make a good one but I feel like I'm going to forget a lot of stuff so you might see some follow-up videos after this. Now of course I'm running on my iPhone. The reason is I wanted to show you some pictures I've already taken and it's not just pictures you can also do video recordings. So you can see here well, you probably can't work out what that is, right? But the cool thing is, if you drag down, you can see the original image, because like I said, there are two cameras, so you can see the overlay with the thermal characteristics, but you can also pull down and then see the original image. Now this was at a, I think this was at the Tate Museum, and this was showing electromagnets affecting old TVs. Um, and you can see there where they're running the power through the magnets, they're obviously heating up. So that's pretty cool. I've also got this pretty interesting picture. Now this is a soldier, he's standing or sitting on a horse rather, and you can see by the color temperature that his hat, which is made of metal, his helmet rather, is very cold. It's pretty much the coldest thing in the picture. And this was a very cold day, so I would expect this brickwork or whatever it is, stone to be very cold but it's actually his helmet that's the coldest so that was pretty interesting to see i felt sorry for him because his head must be pretty cold now you might not recognize this but if i pull this down you might this is buckingham palace in the uk london and you can see all the different people of course their head is one of the hottest points um, not only because the head is naturally hot but also because their clothes are masking some of their heat although you can still see that they are very warm in comparison to other things in the picture you can also see that the windows here are quite warm um, or rather the heating inside would be heating up that glass so yeah pretty cool now this picture shows another example use well kind of now you can see here that this is just a London bus and you can see that most of the heat is around the engine block at the back and the wheels probably where they're you know causing friction against the road and the brakes themselves now the interesting thing about this is if you were say a police officer and you've been chasing someone in a car and suddenly they park between you know there's loads of cars parked along the road and you don't know which one they they are you could point your thermal camera along the road and you would actually find which ones have been running recently because of course the bonnet is going to be warm the tires are going to be warm uh, of course if you're a police officer you could run around touching every car but imagine if you could just point your thermal camera down the road and then just find whichever ones have actually been driven recently because of their heat. So although this isn't a perfect example of that, it does give you a rough idea of the, you know, the idea behind it. Now here's another interesting use example. Now this is actually a train track and I looked all along the train track and there was nothing at all except for this one spot here 
where it was quite warm. Now I couldn't see any specific reason why it was like that. And that would suggest to me that there's probably some kind of issue here, perhaps some kind of power line or something like that that's you know got a problem there. So if you were say a, an engineer or something, you might use something like this to check the tracks and see if there are problems like this. And then you can investigate further to see why there's a hot spot in that specific area. Now this picture was taken in the National History Museum. And the reason why I took it is because it shows you just how big an area you can cover. I mean, there must have been hundreds of people in this picture, and yet we've got details on every single one of them. Well, it kind of fades a bit as you get further away, but it's just really impressive how much detail it can get in. And it's all through this, like it's seeing heat. It's, you know, which is far infrared, but it's really hard to comprehend until you actually start playing with this and you realize what's going on. This isn't some camera trick or, you know, some kind of app. This is real. This is actually seeing far infrared and converting it into thermal images like this. And I actually did a video of this, so I'm gonna cut that in now and show you that. Now this is an interesting picture. Can you guess which room people are using? <laughs> well, it's pretty obvious, right? This one here, because look at how much heat is coming off that room. So it's obvious that whoever's staying here is, you know, making use of that room. So pretty interesting. Now here's something pretty interesting. I went to the zoo and I can't remember which animal this was, but basically I couldn't find the animal with my eyes. So I figured that's a perfect time to use the Fleur 1. So I pulled it out, connected it, and sure enough, his heat signature showed him on the camera. And after that, I was able to spot him through the bushes but I was looking around everywhere with my eyes and I just couldn't find him and then the Fleur pointed it out. Now of course this image isn't super high resolution so I, you can't actually see it on the camera here but that's where he was and I was able to find him by using my thermal camera so that was pretty cool and that showed something else interesting as well is that his little hut here appears to have a heated floor so that was quite interesting, or at least I'm assuming that's the case. Oh, just to clarify, this doesn't need to be plugged in to see your images. They're actually stored on the phone itself. Um, I didn't need to have that plugged in. So here's another example of use. This picture was taken on a cold day and it's pointed at a house with the heating on. Now you can see here this bright line here that is showing heat escaping. And you can see that it's some kind of, I don't know what you'd call it, but some kind of work above the window between the brickwork and the windows themselves. So that's something you'd probably want to take a closer a look at because you could be increasing your electricity bill, your heating bill, gas bill by losing a lot of heat there. So very useful for that kind of thing. It's also useful inside to find where you might have drafts around windows and so on. Now do you remember earlier I mentioned that you can charge the Flow 1 at the same time as using it? Well that's useful because my battery's died so I'm having to run it from a power bank right now. So if I point it at this USB dummy load you can see that there is a lot of heat but the two images don't match up very well so if I hold down my finger here I can then bring up this slider and I can adjust the two cameras so that they actually line up much better now I could take a photo of that now you do have various different color schemes you can choose from for instance you can do hottest which will just show you the hottest thing that's in the image or you could do coldest we can do um, various different types basically, but it doesn't actually matter which one you take a picture in. For instance, if I take a picture like this and then load it up, you can see that I can hit edit and then I can actually change it. So I can change it to whatever was hottest or I could change it to, um, I don't know, let's say coldest, which is the USB part of it here. 
and the table itself. So it doesn't matter which color scheme you actually take the picture in because all the thermal data is saved within the image itself. So you can come back and play with that later. Another useful thing about that is that you can actually turn this on and you can see what the temperature was at each point. So we can see that the resistor was at around 45 degrees Celsius while the table is at around 32. Now accuracy of this does depend on what you're shooting it at. For instance, reflective surfaces aren't very accurate um, and so on and so on. So give or take a couple of degrees, but I found it pretty accurate in use. Now the other great thing is that you can transfer these pictures or videos onto your computer and you can use the FLIR software to do even more with them. So, oh, I mean, it's really just amazing. They've done such a good job with this product, with the price point, with the software. I have had the app crash a few times, but not that big a deal. My biggest complaint with this would be that where it swaps between video, photo, pano, etc. Sometimes I just cannot get it to change. Like right now it's working okay. Um, but sometimes they just cannot get it to change between video and photo and that can be really frustrating when you're sitting there going like this and it just will not change but otherwise I'm so happy with it. So let's go to the computer and look at what the software looks like there. Um, I'm sure lots of people will have questions. If you do, put them in the comments section down below. Now, when you first copy your images onto the computer, you'll basically just see the same as on your phone, the MSX technology, which is the combination of thermal and regular camera or the outlines from the regular camera. But once you put it in the FLIR tools application, which is available for Windows and Mac, you can do a lot more with it. So you've got the main options up here, for instance, if if we want to see just the thermal, this is what it looks like. And that's similar to their competitor product, the Seek Thermal, which doesn't have MSX technology. Then you could go over to Thermal Fusion. Now the nice thing about this is you can select a specific heat range you want to highlight. So for instance, I want to show just the warmest things in the image uh, and you can adjust that to whatever your preference is. So that's pretty cool. Then you have, for instance, picture in picture where you can adjust that you want just a certain portion of the picture to be thermal. Now this could be very useful useful when you want to share pictures with people and for instance there's only an interest in this area and you want to give a larger context so that they can easily see what they're actually looking at. Now with the thermal MSX option here you do have some adjustment to bring in lines or to remove them so you can fade them just till you get it just right so you've got enough detail but you can also see the thermal data quite easily so that's very useful. And of course having all the thermal data saved within the image lets us do things like measurements for instance we can do spot measurements box, circle, line and delta and you can do multiple measurements so I could put one over here I could add another one over here and I could take multiple measurements which would be very useful because when you first used the camera and took the picture you might have only been looking at a light up here but then later when you come back you think oh I wish I'd have measured this or this or something else so it's very useful to have all of the data stored in the image and to be able to come back to it later and actually take extra measurements. Now as for videos I can't see any way to extract any data basically you can just play them back and that's it there's no way to say pause it and then take measurements or something like that I don't know if the data is there stored within the video and it's just too hard for the app to extract or they just don't bother saving it and they just rely on people taking pictures I'm not really sure and to be honest I'm not that bothered to be honest because it works well with pictures so the videos are just kind of a nice bonus sure there's a lot more features that I haven't really shown here but that gives you a basic idea of the advanced features that you can do once you copy the images onto your computer now I feel like I've only really scratched the surface of this I'm sure so many people are gonna have questions and I'm happy to answer them and I'll probably do follow-up videos as well but if you did enjoy this video please give a thumbs up and subscribe for future videos and don't forget to put some comments down below of what you'd like to see any questions you have and so on. Thanks for watching.